is Lisa. I'm very uh, happy uh, to present to you uh, the performance tuning insights that I struck upon uh, during my uh, work in SoftServe and before. And uh, I would love to share them with you today. Uh, and also, please uh, do not hesitate to interrupt me at any time and ask me your questions. And uh, if uh, something, uh, if you don't get something, please just like uh, ask uh, right away because I won't be able to see whether you raise your hand in uh, Zoom. Okay. So uh, let's start with our agenda. Uh, I would um, usually I. Uh, uh, divide uh, our optimization like performance in Power BI into three different categories. It's uh, data model optimization, visualization optimization, and report performance optimization. They are all very interconnected. And um, this is just like small steps that you do on the way when you work with the report. Firstly, you like work with data model, then you go to visualizations, and then you measure the overall re uh, report performance. Uh, and um, let's start with the data model optimization. These are just like a uh, little advice that uh, you uh, can do with your model uh, to get better performance. These are just like the mo most normal things to do. You usually, um, I would recommend you to use import instead of direct query because direct query uh, requires more time uh, for data to load, and it uh, does it during the um, visa, uh, during the visualization uploading and stuff like that. But import uh, it imports all the uh, data before, and when you open the report, on the visualizations uh, are uploaded, and uh, it works much much faster. Then you should use star scheme uh, because it is a much better uh, thing, uh, thing than any uh, anything else you would just like uh, would want to do manually or create something I don't know something on your own that doesn't look anything like a normal star scheme uh, because uh, then all the uh, tables are uh, interconnected and uh, they are. Uh, they have very simple connections and uh, Power BI, the best rule is the simpler, the better. When you complicate things, you usually uh, do worse for performance. Uh, then we should always check for unused columns and measures and remove them. Measures, we uh, don't really affect, if you have lots of measures just like that you do not use, they do not really affect the performance, but uh, at the same time, uh, it um, like trashes the report because you open it and you don't know, uh, do not know whether it's used somewhere. You have to like uh, go through some steps to check. So measures, which is like if you know you don't use them, just uh, you delete them. You can always recreate the measure. It's not a problem. You're all great professionals. I'm sure of that. But uh, unused columns they affect the um, performance and it's very uh, a bad thing because um, uh, Power BI uh, is fine uh, with uh, working with long tables, but it's not good with working with wide tables. Wide tables should be omitted. Like if you know that these columns are not useful and you do not use them, or sometimes you do not use useful columns and it's okay, like, uh, I don't know, uh, explanations for some keys or whatever that you need to, uh, for like um, bug fixing or whatever, just to understand the data be better when you're like uh, investigating some issues, it's fine. But if there are some not useful columns at all, just please delete them. Uh, also, uh, I, uh, I've often seen uh, that people forget to remove automatic calendars and I'll show you how to do that. That's an, uh, that's also a very important step because every time you add uh, some date to the report, if you do not have uh, some table um, uh, marked as a calendar table, uh, then um, all your date fields uh, uh, will be, uh, like Power BI will create automatic tables for them. And that will also um, like uh, take some space in your report and will load longer, which is also a bad thing for our performance. 
Then there is uh, such a more complicated, I guess, thing, which is called um, is available MDX. Uh, this thing I'll sh also show you where you can find it. Um, we normally set it to false for columns that we know that they won't be used uh, uh, to show like to user in the columns or rows or whatever. And then uh, Power BI uh, doesn't create some like internal hierarchies or whatever for them. Uh, and it doesn't take much space also. Uh, so pay, pay attention to that. And uh, also always check whether bi-directional and many-to-many -many connections that you have, that they are definitely necessary. If they are not, you can always uh, use uh, like uh, specific measures. You can rewrite your measures and so on. Uh, normally, bi-directional connections are only required for filtering data. If you use something in filters, then it's uh, it might be fine to have bi-directional, but if, if not, it can usually be emitted with uh, different measures. Uh, also, another thing is to use uh, decimals instead of floats, because um, floats uh, has unlimited space capacity or whatever, uh, and decimal uh, points, they... Um, Mm, they have like um, it limits the amount of uh, numbers up to comma. Um, what else? Uh, the last one uh, for uh, our data model optimization is uh, to use uh, instead of uh, calculated columns and uh, tables, uh, uh, please um, uh, use SQL. Uh, SQL helps us in uh, the most best possible ways. Uh, if uh, you want to calculate something um, that shouldn't be calculated in Power BI, uh, like um, during filtering and stuff like that, if it's just like normal sum, you can always, always replace it with SQL and that will also work better. If Power BI won't, uh, won't need uh, extra time for show uh, visualizations to, to like calculate the data that should be shown there. Are we okay here? I'm um, sorry if I'm talking too fast, pose me. <laughs> Just like uh, if uh, you have any questions, please let me know. No questions, okay. Let's switch to visual, uh, visual um, visualization optimization. And uh, this thing, is what we do with our visuals when we, um, we're done working with our data model, everything is fine. And now we are going, uh, switching to uh, creating visuals uh, and so on. Uh, there are no that many rules, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that they're less important than the previous ones. So uh, we should try to apply the most restrictive filters on the page uh, that there are like possible. If you know that something is uh, not necessary in some certain visual, or it doesn't uh, like it's not required on this like uh, page, uh, it's fine. You you can filter it. If you know that it will be useful, then you leave it. You can just like go to the next group. You can also limit the uh, not only limit with uh, with the help of uh, like normal filters. You can also use uh, top end filter. Uh, so the data loads faster, uh, especially when there are cases when uh, RLS, uh, uh, like our um, restriction uh, restrictions, when users come to the report, users may have different restrictions, and we call that RLS. Uh, and um, if you use RLS in your reports, uh, and uh, you have very like complicated measures and you see that the performance is not uh, going so well even without restrictions, then maybe you should uh, consider having a top end filter uh, if you have like long tables and so on. Um, then uh, you should uh, always uh, limit the number of visuals that you have um, on your page. Uh, it uh, can be a different amount of visuals. It always depends on what measures you have there, what kind of visuals and so on. So you can you have to always test it. Um, and uh, if there are some visuals that you want to include, you can always uh, 
uh, use different switchers, you can uh, use buttons, you can use drill throughs, tool tips, uh, whatever. There are so many different things you can do just like to show a lot, but actually uh, it, it won't be um, shown all together at the same time. So Power BI won't take the like entire time uh, at first to load the whole thing. It will just like go step by step. Um, also, uh, if you want to use some custom visuals, please make sure that they are approved by Microsoft uh, because, and you, and you also know the reason why you want to use that because uh, uh, most of the things, they can be covered by uh, just like basic visuals. And I know that there are some other visuals that uh, they can like, uh, look attractive to us because we we kind of can get sick of our old visuals, but um, they can work uh, longer. It can take longer time to load and uh, it's not gonna work just like as expected for other users. And especially uh, there, it can like, um, it can get more bugs. It can, uh, I don't know, something can be wrong with it. The data can be shown wrong and so on. Uh, there like can be various problems with uh, not approved by Microsoft visuals. So let's avoid them. And the last thing, but not the least, um, uh, we should uh, create a hierarchy for slicers instead of just putting lots of columns. Uh, if you know that the data is interconnected and it, it just like, it actually like in real life, it works as a hierarchy, uh, make sure that you create that hierarchy in Power BI because if you don't, uh, it will, um, you know, Power BI will also take longer time to visualize every column. It will like, uh, it will check uh, whether like um, those columns actually interconnected and uh, the same thing uh, that it can uh, can be found uh, twi twice in different like uh, categories above and so on. So you should just like make make sure that if you know that's a hierarchy, do not let Power BI to think uh, more about it. You know it's hierarchy. You just tell Power BI it's a hierarchy, and that's it. So Power BI does less work. No questions here. Questions? <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think the most interesting part uh, is the report performance optimization. Uh, I think it's the most fun thing to do because we get to use our applications, not only Power BI. Uh, the, I think these are three main um, applications that uh, we can use um, uh, aside for Power BI is tabular editor, Deck Studio and uh, Measure Killer. Um, tabular editor is a great thing. It's probably my favorite thing to do because you can upload basic rules um, to the um, to tabular editor, and you can go there and check whether your report applies like to those rules where like which rules were not applied, and you can check that very easily. And most of the steps they can be uh, like, uh, th th they can be uh, uh, corrected with just like one uh, press of a button and that's it. But uh, always, you have always to always know what you're doing with all of these three apps because it gives us lots of opportunities, uh, but we always have to use our uh, head when we're like deleting something with the help of these apps or changing something, you have to know what you're doing. You have to know the model well, just like to work with these three tools. Because sometimes um, uh, like it can show you that you, you have to, I don't know, turn something off or delete something, but actually you know that it should stay this way. It should work that way because this is just like something for this report. But uh, like generally Power BI thinks uh, like, that's that's a bad thing. Like, let's remove it. Um, also, um, it, with tabular editor, it's uh, very easy uh, to create new measures, to remove old ones, especially if you have the opportunity to use uh, tabular editor three, it's gonna be even easier with that one. 
uh, because it helps you like write uh, measures. It like um, shows you like uh, pos possible uh, formulas, uh, uh, names for formulas and stuff. Uh, Tabular Editor 2 doesn't offer that, but it's free. And Tabular Editor 3 is uh, like it costs money. So if your project can uh, afford that, then it's uh, great. If it doesn't, you will do just fine with Tabular Editor 2 and you'll do just fantastic. Uh, you can also create your own uh, rules and uh, upload it also to those like uh, rules that I mentioned before and check it whether your reports um, uh, are uh, considering those rules. And um, also you can format your measures. For example, you wrote the measure quick uh, and you didn't want to uh, take care of whether it's written like um, beautiful or whatever. Like, uh, and um, you want to just like format it so it looks nice. There's uh, also a button for that I'll show you later. But if you want to do that to all the measures at once, you know that um, like many measures are messed up or something like that, and you want them to look nice, you can use Brava for that. I'll also show you to do that. It's another little um, app. Uh, another um, application uh, is Deck Studio. Um, the thing is that um, there's no uh, not much to write about it, but there's a lot to show with it. So it doesn't mean that I wrote one sentence here and it's not useful at all. It's very useful. It's the most useful of these three to show you that uh, your performance uh, is not good somewhere, but uh, good somewhere else. This is the best thing to check your performance. Uh, and uh, Measure Killer, is a very uh, simple application. Uh, I would use it to find uh, useless columns or to see where the columns or measures are used in what uh, visuals and so on. Uh, and uh, also, um, uh, you uh, have to know what you're deleting there because it can uh, offer you, like it says, oh, this measure is not used anywhere. Like, let's delete it. You're deleting it. Then you open your report and it crashes in some visuals. You have to know for sure. You have to check, double check all these three applications, whatever they want to do. That's the best thing to do. Um, another thing here, uh, I think you'll get this application uh, later, uh, this uh, presentation later, and you'll be able to uh, you will be able to read through these uh, steps. This is just uh, the explanation how to upload these uh, best practice analyzer rules to tabular editor. And that's it. I'm not going to stop here. Uh, now let's uh, see our small report. I created just like simple, simple report. There's no much to see, but I wanted to show you some basic things. First of all, um, hold on a sec. Sorry. Uh, for example, when I told you that we should uh, create less visuals possible, than possible, I meant this. For example, there's a new card uh, that's been available for the last couple of months, if I'm not mistaken, in Power BI. Uh, so there are, um, uh, instead of making, creating three different visuals for three different cards, you can actually use this new visual type, it's called card new, and you can create three cards or more, whatever, like uh, numerous uh, cards there, but it will take only one, one visual to load. So it's very useful. Another thing is that I told you about switch. You can uh, create a measure or you can use a parameter or both or whatever, uh, just to, um, to switch between different types of data you want to show. For example, uh, you know that your user wants to see uh, amount in dollars and then amount in units. Uh, and they want to see lots of different data, but uh, you do not have much space and you know that the performance will uh, go bad if you use uh, like six, for example, visuals, right? You can just create three visuals and then create the fourth just like this uh, simple uh, switcher and you can switch slice between uh, two different things dollars and units 
for example, this is just an example how you can use it. This can be done for like different things. Um, also, uh, you want to uh, like um, for uh, to create some like details uh, for different graphs. You can use like uh, visualize tooltips, like things like this. Like they can be different on each graph. You can create a map there and so on. So just like uh, make sure you like um, you use all the things possible uh, before choosing just to create another another visual or another five visuals or whatever. And uh, here you can like um, we see that there's lots of data and stuff like that, and uh, we can like. Um, analyze uh, how many rows can a user want to see at once and then we can limit uh, the number of rows here uh, either by uh, using top end filter or something like that and uh, then we'll just like make our user uh, to slice and dice our data uh, to see the um, like like the data they want in the below table so something like that. Any questions here? Okay. Uh, let's start then with our applications. Uh, we go to, like we upload all our external applications. Uh, then we go to external tools, uh, and we'll find all our external applications there. Uh, let's start with Tabular Editor. It always uh, tells you that uh, we, sh we can proceed at our own risk, that uh, it's only experimental features and stuff. We just press OK, it's fine. Uh, we, um, where can we find our uh, rules? Uh, first of all, here we like uh, manage VPA rules, like la, la, la. I, uh, I left you the instructions how to upload them here. Uh, so uh, let's imagine that you have uploaded them. And you press uh, two tools, best practice analyzer, and you'll see such thing. Lots of different text, uh, looks kind of scary. You think, oh my God, so many errors, so many problems. It's fine. It doesn't mean that everything has to be changed. Um, sorry. Mm, yeah. Um, we uh, sometimes, these steps, I, I'm not going to mention all these things possible here, but sometimes steps they can, uh, like you can apply fix or generate fix script and then uh, apply it there. It's simple, like you can do like apply fix and that's it. And it's removed. It's done. Uh, uh, tabular editor has done uh, the entire job for you. But you always have to review these little things. For example, I told you that is available MD, uh, in uh, MDX that should be um, uh, put to false when uh, something is not using in rows and so on. So um, when you, uh, before you want to press just like apply fix, you have to review what columns it offers you here and whether it's like uh, it, should, it should be done uh, like if uh, there you can part uh, you can partially just do just like one column uh, just make sure you know what columns you are doing that to and um we here uh, see uh, here we see a problem uh remove other date table that i told you about and to remove it we go to our table view to our calendar table because for example, in this data model, there is a calendar, uh, but uh, it's not uh, marked uh, as a, sorry, there's this thing blocks my, oh, here. Uh, in table tools, uh, you can go to uh, table tools and then uh, stay on your uh, date column and mark it as date table. Mm, oh, um, and that's the problem here. It says that the date column can have gaps in dates. That's also important thing. If your report misses just one date or something, it won't allow you to do that to your column. So you have to make sure that you add all the date possible here. 
And when you do, it will uh, let you do this like uh, J column. You'll press OK. Uh, you'll go back uh, to your best practice analy analyzer in tabular editor. You'll refresh and you'll see that remove order date table team will disappear. It won't, um, it won't create these things anymore. These are just local tables, date tables that it just like creates to process your data. It won't need, uh, Power BI won't need that anymore when you mark something as a calendar. And uh, there is, there can be also only one calendar in your entire model. So just um, when you create your model, just uh, pay attention to that. Mm, what else is interesting here? Um, for example, it says minimize power query transformations. That's what I told you also before. Uh, if you want to do something with power query, calculated columns, calculated tables, you should always go to SQL and do it there. Do not do it uh, in Power BI. Uh, it will take more time to load. See, um, there are like different categories. Performing, DAX expressions, maintenance, uh, formatting, and stuff like that. So uh, this thing, it influences performance. So when you see that here is like a label performance, it's important. Make sure you review all these things. It also uh, lets you know what uh, columns are redundant that should be removed. Uh, so you have to make sure that uh, these columns actually not used and uh, stuff like that. Mm. It gives you information whether you have any bi-directional or many-to-many -many relationships. Um, then when we go to maintenance, uh, it um, also, it always says that uh, objects have uh, no description. If you haven't added the description, uh, it's fine. It doesn't influence the performance. Uh, I, I usually just ignore it, to be honest. Um, we can uh, um, check our formatting. Uh, we can uh, um, hide our foreign keys so the user won't see it. So there are like different little things you can do. Most of them, they can be done through applied fix. Some cannot, uh, some cannot, but you then read it and you will explore what you can do to uh, avoid that mistake in your report. Uh, here you can, um, create like different uh, measures and so on. Uh, uh, as you see here, like it's not well written. It's not uh, like, it's not formatted well. And here's the button. You just press format docs. And it's done pretty. So, uh, but you here, you do it one by one, which is not useful. Uh, sometimes you want to do all at once. And uh, then uh, we go again to our external tools. We go to Bravo. And uh, here we can press format docs, uh, analyze and out. It will take some time to analyze it. And then we'll select what should be formatted. And we format selected. Congratulations, three me measures were formatted successfully. That's it. But if with three measures, it's easy to do it even manually, like in uh, just like here in tabular editor. Uh, but um, if you have like hundreds or even more measures, uh, you should use Bravo to format them all at once. Um, then uh, what else? Um, but I'll show you the measure quill, uh, killer really quick and then we'll switch to Dex Studio because I think it, it's going to take more time. Uh, here you can choose single report uh, data set because we're going to work with just like single report. It shows you your local server here, and you uh, select your report that you want to review. 
I uh, remind you that this application is used to see what measures are used or not used, what columns to use, not used, and uh, where they are used. For example, here we see that there are like white data and red data. Red data means that it's not used anywhere. And you can press here, filter and used, and you'll see only uh, data that's not used anywhere. And you can review it. You can sort it like uh, whether you want to sort it like by whether it's located or maybe what type it, it has and so on and so on. Uh, you can uh, uh, then uh, kill uh, measures and columns here. I would recommend to use this application only to kill measures, not to kill columns, because if you kill columns here, it will create a uh, Power M script in Power Query to remove uh, those columns. And um, it will just like worsen the performance. But uh, you can do that in SQL yourself. This is just like uh, a node for you to check whether this column is actually used. And if you know that it, uh, it's not used, it's not needed here, you'll just delete it in uh, SQL. That's it. Um, then um, you can uh, select measures to kill or all. Uh, if you reviewed all measures that are not used and you want to kill them all, you can do that uh, all at once. Uh, also, uh, what happened? Oh, here. Um, the another interesting thing here that uh, you can see where a column or a measure or something is used. Uh, you see here that, for example, amount is used in parameter. It's used in uh, some M expression. It's used uh, in uh, sales measure. Uh, in it, it's used in card visual, which is located on sales overview page. I think this information can be very useful when you want to find something and you don't know whether it's used or not. But I have, uh, like, it happened to me that sometimes it says that something is not used, but I know it's used. So make sure you still check whether it says that it's not used. I've never saw it saying that something is used, but it wasn't used, but I saw it showing that something is not used at all, but it was used there. Okay. Uh, and now let's talk uh, about measuring the performance of our report. First of all, there is a performance analyzer built in Power BI. And uh, you can do it just like here. Uh, you press start recording. Then you uh, normally, before doing all of this, you have to clear a cache uh, in uh, your options and settings. Okay. Um, when you're done with that, you start recording and you press refresh visuals. And you can see like uh, how like um, how much uh, time uh, each visual requires to be shown. And we see the table uh, like uh, gets the most of the time and then the card new. So we have uh, we can check here is uh, the problem uh, if the most time was written here in DAX query, it means that there are some measures very complicated and we have to review them. Uh, but we see that it's visual display uh, and other, most of most of it takes other. So we have to think maybe about filtering data about like that top end filter I told you about or something like that. Uh, or we can leave it like this if such performing works fine for the, for us if it, like, it doesn't bother, bother us, okay? Uh, with the card, the same thing. We see that dark square is fine. We see that uh, it's visual, uh, that like um, is uh, complicated and stuff. So we also then think of whether to use such a, um, visual or maybe replace it with another one. And we can uh, like duplicate this page uh, create other visuals and then check whether the performance works better that way. Uh, but uh, sometimes we just want to check overall, like um, 
uh, we know that there's a problem with the page. Some, uh, for example, a user came to us and told, oh, your report takes uh, such a long time to load and stuff like that. So you can just export uh, these data. Um, and then you'll go to Dex Studio. Here. And uh, normally I turn on right away query plan, service settings, and here you can load the data that you exported. I have uh, exported earlier, so we'll just use that. Uh, so here you can see uh, how much time it takes. And you can sort it, uh, you can um, just like see what the problem is and for example uh then when you you see that like the table loads the lines right uh you press it uh, it uh, gives you the script for like loading the table that it uses then you can go to survey timings and uh, you just like um, for me it's f5 uh, so to just like uh, update the data and we see here what it does. It doesn't have uh, many um, steps it does, but at the same time, uh, there's lots of data, lo uh, lots of different drawings. And uh, that's the reason uh, for uh, why it loads so long. Maybe we, we should uh, verify whether all um, columns are useful maybe we should limit the data and so like we can start with that here uh also you can check the query plan uh like it, it sometimes it's complica uh, complicated sometimes it's not it depends on visual but here you can just like understand how many steps it takes uh, for your um query to load uh and um another thing here uh, that I uh, really like. It's uh, on advanced uh, page. It's called View Metrics. Uh, here you can see uh, all the tables that you've uploaded to the report and how much size uh, it takes in your report. And you can review uh, like the most uh, like columns that take the most space. For example, here it's ID. We can review whether we actually need it or not. Uh, and uh, we can go like uh, column by column in each uh, uh, in each table. It also sh shows you whether there are any like violations uh, and uh, how much a percent of the table as such or such column takes. So this is a very interesting thing to explore in your model. Um, and you'll also find that um, uh, Power BI creates uh, its own dictionaries. For example, why ID column takes so much space? It's just an ID, it's just a number. But it actually creates a dictionary uh, into uh, like all this, it finds that all these data is interconnected and that's why it creates a separate dictionary for them based on ID. Uh, here you can uh, like just like go and see uh, without uh, like it, the uh, number or the name of the column will be just like here uh, and uh, table like the name of the table and the column they will like um, will be shown together, not just like under one another like here, but just like together and you'll see just like the biggest columns of all just generally in your report. Uh, you can also see the um, relationships you have, uh, what kind of relationships is you chose like one to one, uh, one to many, and so on, so on. So you can check that here. Uh, partitions, whether it like um, you have such long tables that the Power BI had partitioned the data. As we see here, we don't have much data. So the partitions, it says just one. So it uh, keeps all the data in one piece. Uh, and uh, like just like summary, whatever. Uh, doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really need that. Uh, and also there is uh, such thing as run benchmark. 
uh, you can select how many like cold cache executions, warm cache executions you have to check. Because uh, uh, you'll find that when you uh, check your performance, every time you click like uh, check again, check again, it can change the uh, time required to show here. So you can uh, do it just like automatically here. And uh, it will just like right now, it will do five cold cache, which means that um, on cleared cache and five warm cache when the cache is not uh, cleared. Okay, um, that's it for me. Any questions? No questions, it means that it is really complicated or it is really easy. Very, very good presentation. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you. And I have also you, one little thing left. If, if no questions, sorry, I, I heard someone talking. Okay. Uh, let's check what you have learned. I hope you've listened well. Um, you can um, use either these. Um, um, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. You cannot see that. No. Um, oh, okay. I'll give you one minute to join, I think. Please, uh, like, just like unmute yourself and tell me if you need more time. Answers, there's only one answer possible. And there's also only six minutes to complete 10 questions. Uh, I will uh, read you through these questions and then we'll uh, go through the answers when uh, everyone is done, okay? Uh, so the first question is, which tool helps you find useless measures and columns in Power BI? Dex Studio, Measure Killer, Tabula Editor, or SQL? The next, the next question is, what application helps you see where columns or measures are used in Power BI? The answers are pretty much the same. Tabula Editor, Dex Studio, SQL, Measure Killer. I guess I, I, I also should take a part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. Uh, the third question is, should automatic calendars created by Power BI for data fields be removed? Someone has already answered, so I cannot see all the possible answers. Oh. The fifth question, which application helps in working with performance and checking space usage in Power BI? What should be used instead of direct query to optimize data model in Power BI? What should be marked as calendar in Power BI to optimize data model? Which application can be used to format measures in Power BI? The 
which application can be used to matters at once in Power BI. And the last one, what can improve report performance? Please let me know if anyone has not finished. Let's wait, I'll wait like, I don't know, two, three minutes. If not, just tell something. I think we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's review our answers. Which tool helps you find useless measures and columns in Power BI? It's a measure filler. Uh, in tabular editor, you cannot like you can somehow find useless measures in columns, but not the way that it's done in measure killer. So normally measure killer is used for that. What application helps you see where columns or measures are used in Power BI? Um as I said before, it's measure killer. Uh, remember I showed you that there was like, that uh, when you open the, uh, uh, how it's called, just like the uh, name of the column or name of the measure, it shows you where it's located. So definitely not tabular editor, definitely not Dex Studio. Dex Studio is used only for performance things and that's it. Um, then, uh, should automatic calendars created, uh, created by Power BI be removed? Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, which application, uh, can be used to review basic rules that are not considered in Power BI? It's tabular editor. I told you about those PPA rules. I hope you all upload them after this meeting and use them in, when working with your reports. Which application helps in working with performance and checking space usage in Power BI? That's definitely Dex Studio. I'm glad that most of you got that. Uh, what should be used instead of direct query to optimize data model in Power BI? Uh, definitely import because the antonym to direct query in Power BI is import. SQL kind of, but it's not... Um, it's something that you use before, even for direct query, you use SQL, you can use SQL. Um, what should be marked as calendar in Power BI to optimize data model? Single calendar, definitely single cal calendar. Uh, we cannot mark each date field in uh, um, Power BI as a calendar, only one. Which application can be used to format measures, tabular editor? Uh, which application can be used to format all measures at one Bravo and Bravo to you for answering this question correct. And um, what can improve report performance uh, using decimal? That's, I'm so glad that most of you got that. Uh, and uh, who answered uh, using bi-directional connections or adding calculated columns and tables, it will worsen the performance, not improve it, okay? That's it from me.